In today's video, I'll be showing you how to build your very own custom GPTs because this new feature allows you to set up ChatGPT in a way that is custom tailored to your very own needs. And because this is no easy task, I'll be providing you with a total of 10 GPTs that you can copy paste straight from the free resource that I'm giving you into your very own account, which will help you achieve exceptional results as soon as possible. Now, before we dive right into the step by step, I need to point out two things. First of all, as of right now, this is only available to enterprise and ChatGPT plus users. Secondly, and I feel like this is really important. Let's talk about what actually makes this special and why a lot of the internet kind of got it wrong. Let me elaborate. So up until now, everybody using ChatGPT used the web interface, right? You could switch between 3.5 and 4, and then they added more and more, including code interpreter, custom instructions, DALI, plugins, and more. And now people have the perception with GPTs coming out that everything changed. GPTs are this next level thing. But what actually happened here is they just bundled everything into one package that is more user-friendly. Because if you look at all the fields that I'll be showing you how to fill out in a second here, you will realize that the first two are just packaging. Instructions are essentially custom instructions instructions. If you're following the channel, I've been hammering the table about how important they are since months now. Advanced prompt engineers give all their context inside of their long prompt. But for most people, having instructions just like this set up for their very own use case was the best way to navigate ChatGPT. Now they moved that in here and made it less confusing with just one field. Conversational starters are just prompts like we always had them. And down here, you have all the features that they've been rolling out over the last months. Okay, maybe the knowledge base is slightly new here, but you could do that with Code Interpreter. But essentially what this does is it runs a prompt to condense your documents and then it searches over them. So nothing really revolutionary here. And capabilities, heck, you'll know that web browsing, DALI, Code Interpreter were all releases throughout the last month. And here's the last one, which gets people confused. They think Actions is this massive upgrade, something that wasn't possible before. Well, you know what these are? These are just plugins. If you have the technical ability to build API endpoints, then you could have easily built a plugin before this. Matter of fact, over a thousand of them popped up in the store and nobody was really using them. So as you can see, all of this that we're about to cover isn't really new. What is new is this GPT packaging and this user-friendly interface because now you set it up once and then it sits in your sidebar. And then if I go to my copywriter here, which you will receive with this video, you can just pin it in the sidebar and it makes it really easy to navigate this. Because before GPTs, if I wanted to use all of these features, if I wanted custom instructions, code interpreter and plugins at the same time, well, some of those combos weren't even possible. You couldn't have code interpreter and plugins on at the same time. But the worst part was every time I wanted to switch custom instructions, I had to go in, I had to delete this, delete this, then go to a different file, copy paste back into here and save. And I had to do that every every single time when I wanted to switch. Now you get to create these presets once and they sit in your sidebar and you can quickly access them. So this is the big thing that changed. It's a user friendliness that makes this approachable to everybody that makes this stand out. And just two sentences on the assistance API because a lot of people ask about it. That is essentially a programmatic version of using GPTs. Main difference being that you pay for every single message, but then you get the ability to embed it into other apps. So if you build a no code chatbot, you could use the assistance API in there to interact with it. But again, in some of my tests, when I uploaded a lot of files into that, sending one message cost me around eight cents. Whereas here, it's included in your ChatGPT Plus subscription. Okay, so now let's get into building a highly specialized GPT. So really the first step is heading over to chat.openai.com, the ChatGPT website. And now there's two ways to access the GPTs. One is up here under Explore, and the second one is when you click your name here under My GPTs. Both of those get you to this page where you can pick some of the presets down here. So these are the ones that are created by OpenAI. But the most interesting part here is right at the top, create a GPT. By clicking this button, we will be able to enter the GPT builder. And now you you really have two ways of approaching this, okay? One is by just talking to ChatGPT and it will build the GPT for you. But let me tell you that while this might be super user-friendly, you just talk to it and it creates your GPT, it's not extremely precise because the user-friendliness has a price to it, right? And that's why in order to get way more control, we'll be heading over to the configure tab over here which will present you with all these options. Now, don't worry, as mentioned, I prepared 10 templates that you can copy paste straight into here that are set up to fit this entire template. All you need to do is go to the first link in the description and sign up to my weekly newsletter. It's completely free and it also allows me to send you updates once things change or we make it even better. So this is the file that you will be getting and to anybody who has been around since a while, you will be familiar with this. But what we did now is we updated it with this GPT. So if you just scroll down a little bit, you'll have this section here with all the profiles. And yes, there's way more to explore in here, but we'll just focus on on these GPTs because what I'm giving you is a full company worth of GPTs. You have 10 different assistants here that you can pick from as a starting template. So for the sake of this video, let's go with the product developer over here. And the easiest way to do this is just to head on over to this GPTs tab over here. And now all you have to do is copy paste these various fields.
built into ChatGPT. So as we wanted the product developer, I'll just copy the title and look, even in my 14 inch, I can beautifully split screen this. So into the name, I'll put product developer and here I'll personalize it a little bit. I'll say Igor's product developer. For the description, just hit this button that says copy to clipboard, paste the description. And for this main part where you give it the instructions, how should it behave? What are the goals of the GPT? Well, here, all I want you to do to get started is just hover over these instructions and hit the copy to clipboard button again and paste them in here. And look, this is the point. This is a super long and detailed description of what we want the GPT to do. It specifies all the little details that you might not consider when just starting out. We have things like the role, the projects, the challenges, values, and the background of the GPTs. And we've been developing these assistants since months. So just feel free to experiment with these, but that's really it for the instructions. Next up, we have a few options down here. So let's talk about those. So one of them is called conversation starters. And what this really is, it's prompt templates that are quickly accessible to the user of the GPT. So here you should fill in some prompts that will be useful to the user of my product developer here. And yes, we prepared those too. So you can just scroll a bit to the right here and you'll find matching prompts. So for the product developer, I have a list of 30 matching prompts here. So now I can go through and pick the ones that I like as a conversation starter for my very own GPT. So for example, I'll take this one, which is help in strategic planning. Again, copy paste that. Then I'll take this one, which creates design concepts, and that should be good enough to start off. Now, one side note is that as per usual with the prompts that we provide on this channel, these do include variables, so you can customize them to your own needs. So if something is in square brackets, feel free to change that to whatever suits your exact needs. But I'll say this, because there's so much information inside of the instructions already, you can use these prompts with the brackets to it. It will just assume the goals and the projects that are outlined in the instructions. So if you love recustomizing something, it's probably in here. Good, so now we have two prompt templates, leaving us with the last three options options here. And these are a little more advanced. So let's briefly talk about them. So here you can add additional knowledge. And what this allows you to do is you can upload files and then Igor's product developer will consider that file every time it seems relevant to what the user is asking for. Meaning if the user uses the second prompt here, can you create a sequence of innovative design concepts? And then as the knowledge you uploaded a specific design guideline, like this Nike design guide that I got off the internet. Well, if I decide to upload this, it will consider that every time it's going to be designing something. And the way to think about the knowledge that you want to add, or some of the other capabilities or actions down here is really this. If he just went out there and hired a brand new assistant, what type of documents, what type of knowledge would be helpful to him or her to complete the tasks that you want him or her to do? Well, as they're assisting you with product development, in this particular case, design guidelines make sense, but you might also want to consider uploading an Excel sheet with all the products your company has with the prices and historic performance, because then Igor's product developer will have the ability to consider that in its answers making them more valuable. And the same thing goes for the capabilities and the actions down here. So the capabilities are basically the different modalities of ChatGPT, but now they all merged into one. So the first one is obviously about its ability to browse the internet. The second one is the DALI free image generator. And the third one is the code interpreter, which I'd keep on most of the time, because if you upload analytics, this is really going to allow it to do more with that. So with capabilities, I would say when in doubt, just leave all three of them on. You can always change it later on. And then last but certainly not least are actions. And I would say these go beyond the scope of this tutorial, because here you need a little bit of of coding knowledge as you will be accessing external APIs. So a good way to think about this is that every single chat GPT plugin that you've seen so far is going to be accessible as an action here. And then developers get to build all types of tools that will integrate into here. But as I said, that's a little more advanced. So all we'll do right now is have these detailed instructions and have all the capabilities. Oh, and one more thing that we can do here is we also have an image. So if you just open up this product developer like so, then here we are. Let me just take a quick screenshot of her and I'll upload the photo, giving it a bit more personality. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is really it. Now we're ready to test it. So if I full screen it, you'll see that I get to test it in here. We have the two prompt presets in here. So let's just try the second one. Can you create a sequence of innovative design concepts for a product that encompasses functionality, aesthetics, and user experience? Please provide bullet point summaries for each concept. All right, so in this case, it really would benefit from us specifying the product. So we'll do just that. I'll go to the left here. I'll change this product variable to chat GPT assistant library. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the first version of Igor's product developer. So I'll go to the top right, I'll say save. And here you get three choices. Okay, so only me makes this private where nobody else has access to it. And you'll just be using this for yourself. Only people with a link makes it semi public where if people share your link around, they'll get to access the GPT. So be careful with that. And then there's just plain public meaning it will be added to the store once that comes around. I'll just make this one public, say confirm. And there you go. Now to top right, I have Igor's product designer pinned. So with 
these three dots, I could hide it from the sidebar. But why would I do that? I'll just run the second prompt that we customized a little bit here. And it's going to create a sequence of innovative designs. Now, why would we go through all the steps of doing this, right? Couldn't we just open up a new chat and run the prompt in there? Well, certainly you could. But look at what happens if you do that. I'll just copy the prompt, new chat, and I'll just run this in here. And now we come back to what I said in the beginning. Because remember when I told you that ChatGPT is just a general purpose tool? And these GPTs are assistants for specific purposes? Well, look at this. The general purpose tool gives us suggestions like, like AI assistants, virtual librarian avatars, and more. But if we go into Igor's product designer, as I mentioned, the product developer has a whole set of values and preferences, goals, and approaches to working. So because that is way more specific, also our output is way more specific, which is exactly what you want with these GPTs, right? Look at that. Modular interface design, integrated workflow management, modular interface design, AI-powered design suggestions. These are all things we could use as innovative design concepts when coming up with a new product. As opposed to classic chat GPT that just did its best at guessing, but a lot of times that causes hallucinations and just plainly wrong guesses because it doesn't have the detailed information. And another reason to use this is that you can always go back to this explore tab and now I can edit my product developer and make it better over time. I can add more documents, make the instructions even more specific to me and not to mention all the other features and advanced functionality down here. And then you can just keep using the preset to create various GPTs that fit your various roles. So me as a YouTuber, I'll have multiple GPTs because I have to wear many hats in my work. But maybe all you need is one or two that have the exact right data. So again, you can get this template that also comes as a PDF as the first link in the description below. Oh, and a quick side note, it also comes with something I call the Prompt Factory, which is a prompt generator for the specific GPT. So you just go to Prompt Factory here. And if I just copy this super long prompt from the product developer, I can just open up a new chat, paste this, hit enter, and it's going to generate 30 brand new prompts depending on the profiles. So if you customize the profile over time, it will also generate custom prompts. Yep, there it goes. So go get your 10 GPT assistants and start using them in your everyday work. Link is below as per usual. And then for anybody who's ready to go a step further than this, we're building out the ultimate version, which is a massive library of 1000 GPTs. Right now we're at almost 700, but we're expanding this based on community feedback. And what you get is more of what you just saw, a web interface to easily access these, and the course that goes into detail of how to get the maximum out of this product. Because there's really a lot here, and especially the customization can be super valuable. And that's exactly what we talk about in the videos here. So now that we looked at how to build some of these, it's time to explore what other people have been up to and what they built with this brand new feature. And that's why I went ahead and picked out some of the most interesting GPTs on the internet that were built within the first week and created this video that includes links to try them all. I'll see you there.